Hi guys, we're going to continue our study of functions, again looking at mappings, but this time we're going to consider the meaning of one-to-one, -one, many to one, and one to many mappings. Let's take a few examples, okay? Let's say we've got the mapping uh, x is mapped onto x plus two. And let's take that mapping, and we should know by now what that's going to look like. Let's take the values negative uh, two, negative one, 0, 1, 2, right? Those are our input values. Where are they going to be mapped onto? Well, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Because negative 2 is going to be mapped onto 0, negative 1 mapped onto 1, 0 onto 2, 1 onto 3, and 2 onto 4, right? Because every input value you just add 2 to get the output value. And hopefully what you can see here is that each individual input value is mapped onto one and only one output value, right? So each input value is mapped onto one and only one output value. And conversely, if you take each output value, it is only achieved by one and only one input value. In other words, there aren't two inputs here that give you the output of one. And there aren't two inputs that give you an output of, of two, okay? Every single output is achieved by only one input. And so therefore we call this a one to one mapping, right? One input goes to one output. Okay, and only one output. Let's look at the next example. Let's say we've got another rule that x is mapped onto x squared. And again, let's have input values negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Okay, well, how is this mapping going to work? Well, negative 2 will be mapped onto 4. Negative 1 is mapped onto 1, 0 to 0, 1 is mapped onto 1, and 2 is mapped onto 4, right? Because minus 2 squared is 4, minus 1 squared is 1, 0 is mapped onto 0, and 1 is mapped onto 1, and 2 is mapped onto 4. However, you notice that we've got the numbers 1 and 4 here repeated. So actually what we could do is we could get rid of these get rid of that, and say that the number one is mapped onto here, and the number two is also mapped on to there, right? So if we follow what, what's being said, then we have got two potential inputs that map on to the same output four, right? It's negative two and positive two, they both map on to four. In the same way, we've got two inputs here, negative one and one, that both map on to one. So what kind of uh, mapping do we call this? We call this a many to one. Why? Because there is more than one possible input that could be mapped on to the same output, right? So there is more than one possible input that can be mapped on to one output. For example, Negative 2 and positive 2 are two inputs that can be mapped onto the output 4. Negative 1 and positive 1 are two inputs that can be mapped onto the output 1. So we call this a many to 1. Next one. Let's say that we have got the mapping. X is mapped onto uh, the square root of X. Okay, and let's take the following values here. Let's say we've got uh, 0, 4, sorry, 0, 1, 4, 9. Okay, let's take those. Now, 0, you square root it, you get 0. So that's, that's fairly obvious. Okay. That goes to there. But what about 1? Well, 1 could either be square rooted to give positive 1, or it could be square rooted to give negative 1. Right? So we could say that 1 can be mapped either to here or to here. 
What about four? Well, I could take the number four and I square root it, I could get positive two and I could also get negative two. So how is that going to be mapped? Well, four could be mapped onto here or onto here, right? So two possible outcomes. And the same thing with nine, right? Nine, if I square root it, can become positive three or negative three. And so you can say that that is mapped onto here or here. Uh, I'm trying to guess what do you think this mapping is going to be called, right? Because what, what we're saying is on the left-hand side, the inputs, and one input, for example, the input one, can be mapped onto two possible outputs, negative one and positive one. And, and the same is true for four, right? Four can be mapped onto negative two and positive two. So a single input can be mapped on to two or possibly more outputs. And so we call this type of mapping a one to many because a single input can be mapped on to more than one output. Okay, so just, just to clarify this so far, let's go back. A one-to-one -one, uh, mapping, right? Every single input is mapped onto only one output, and each output is only achieved by having one input, right? So it's just a, a connection between each input and output. A many-to-one mapping is one where uh, each output, each single output, could be achieved by many inputs. So in this particular case, you've got two values that could give you each uh, output. And a one-to-many mapping is one in which uh, each individual input may have more than one possible output. Okay, so we've got one-to-one many-to-one and one-to-many mappings. And these can be represented on these graphs, right? So here, this was our mapping x to x plus two. And remember that this is a one-to-one. -one. And that should make sense, right? Because if I take any individual input, let's just say I take positive one, then that is gonna be mapped onto just one output there. That case three. Okay, that is a one to one mapping. Let's have a look at this one. This was our mapping x is mapped onto x squared. Uh, and this was a many to one mapping. Why was that? Well, again, let's take our value. Let's say we took, took the value two, that's our input value. And uh, if I take that input value, that maps on to four as my output value. But of course, if I just go across, I can read off here that there is another input value that would also give me an output of four, which is negative two, right? So if I take positive two as my input, I'm gonna get positive four as an output. But if I take negative two as an input, I'll also get positive four as an output. And so I've got two potential inputs that will give me the same output. Right, so this is a many to one mapping. Lastly, what we have here is our mapping x is mapped onto the square root of x. Right, and we remember that there were two possible outputs for every input. This is a, therefore called a one to many. How do we see this? Well, let's just take, for example, our input value four. If that's one single input, notice that there are two possible outputs. I can either have the output here of positive two, or I can have the output here of negative two. So you can think about this graphically, okay? One to one, each input has only got one output, vice versa. Many to one, each individual output could be achieved by having two or more possible inputs, and in this case, two and negative two. For the one-to-many mapping, each individual input has got two potential outputs, or, or possibly more than two, depending upon your map. Right, so this is one-to-one, many-to-one, one-to-many mapping.
Now, this leads us on to the, to the last point of this particular video, which is the definition of a function. OK, so we've dealt with mappings. A function is a particular type of mapping. So let's just have a look at that. A function is a rule that maps each input value to just one output value. Right, so a function is a rule that maps each input to just one output. Now, if you've been struggling to follow, this can seem a bit confusing, but just, just think for a second what this is saying. It's saying that if you've got a mapping where an input can map to more than one output, then that isn't a function. All right, so if you've got a mapping where an input can map to more than one output, then that isn't a function. So if we just go back and look here, right? It means that this thing over here, this thing, that is not a function. Why? Because each individual input, I right, take that input, has got more than one possible output, be either here or here. So if each input has got more than one output, that is not a function. Okay, so this is not a function. Whereas the other two are fine. Okay, because in the one-to-one -one mapping, you've got one input goes to, goes to one output, so that's fine. And for the many-to-one function, for this one here, what we're saying is that, look, if I take one input, make it positive one here, there's only one output there. Okay, so it's not two outputs for this individual input. There's only one output. So that means that this is a function. So to clarify, function is a rule that maps each input value to just one output value. And that means that one to many functions, these things are not, sorry, one to many mappings are not functions. So that's the end of that. I hope that was helpful. May, you may have to watch that a couple of times, I think, to, to get a hang of it. But uh, um, I hope that the video was helpful. Okay, guys, I will see you again next time.